Mr. Investor Lord, welcome back to the channel, baby. Free the man of race. Aquaman wants them back. But we haven't kidnapped them. We have, however, mapped them out. Yes, these guys at the Vertebrate Genome Lab. These guys are known as the Genome Warriors on Twitter. So they've posted this very interesting video which shows us the Sapphire system live in action, mapping out the genome of a manta ray. So first of all, I'm going to be talking about these guys, who they're attached to and connected to, how this can bring us to Cytopia and increase our sales of the Sapphire system. We're going to be talking about the big, big picture. And also funding. We want to know about money. If you're new around here, my name is Miguel. I look at big, juicy, growth stocks, baby. I want a 10x. I want a 20x. I want a 50x my money. We've been covering bio nanogenomics since it was a $2 stock all the way up to the heights of 15. But we're going to be covering this long term. Just remember, none of this is financial advice. It is for entertainment only. If you're able to support my channel to do research like this and create the best videos I can, please click the join button. It's only 99 cents. You can join any tier. But if you're unable to join channel memberships, just leave me a comment, hit me with a like and click subscribe. That is more than enough for me. Thank you so much for your love and support. Okay, so first things first this is really juicy. The Vertebrate Genome Lab shared what they're currently doing with the BioNano Sapphire system in real time. So let's take a look and rewind and see who these guys actually are. Vertebrate Genome Lab over here on the right. Come for the genome, stay for the memes. Rockefeller University. Oh man, I like these guys already. They're cool. They're cool. So we can see here the Rockefeller University. We've got the Vertebrate Genome Laboratory and previously in other videos I've shown you here. So first let's introduce them. These guys are part of the G10K Consortium, an international consortium of tissue issue curators, biologists, conservationists, genome scientists, computer scientists, and the list goes on and on, baby. What's interesting to see here is, in addition to the VGL, the genome sequencing hubs also include the Sanger Institute in the UK and the Max Planck Institute in Dresden, Germany. And if you see this picture, this is their team on the left. See the picture on the right. They have PacBio's machines there, and we've got the Sapphire in the corner there. So in terms of their projects, they've got the Vertebrate Genome Projects at Rockefeller University here. And what they want to do is they're aiming to generate error-free reference quality genome assemblies of all 66,000 vertebrate species. So they've stated they really want to understand, you know, the DNA sequence between all vertebrates and they want to enable the study of how genes have contributed to evolution and the survival of species. They've stated that the Vertebrate Genomes Project, the motivation for it is based in part on the G10K mission to generate genomes of 10,000 or more vertebrate species. So if we go to this link here, we can see here that the Genome 10K community of scientists, their ultimate mission is to understand how complex animal life evolved through changes in DNA and use this knowledge to become better stewards of the planet. So these guys have just been working on manta rays and I want to show you how we could potentially make 20 cells of these guys if we haven't already sold to these labs. So say they have 20 labs here in genomics and genetics across the world. We can potentially sell to each one of these labs and get a sapphire system in there. Now when looking at this tweet, I want to see who's tagged here. Who is this Gavin Naylor? Mmm, let's follow him. So it turns out Gavin Naylor is the director of the Florida program of Shark Research, a curator and a professor at Florida. Florida Museum of Natural History at the University of Florida. So they're doing sharks as well. Now this is really interesting that they're focusing on kind of, you know, the marine life, the ocean life, but let's take a look at the bigger picture. So I don't know who this is, but if you go to this website, neil.fun, you can look at the deep sea. So this website shows creatures that are known to us and how deep the sea is and exactly where the creatures are typically found within that sea. So about four meters deep, you can find Atlantic salmon. Polar bears can swim to a depth of about 28 meters, according to this website. Then we've got the clownfish is that Nemo? Hello, Nemo. And as you scroll down and get deeper into the sea, you'll be able to see beluga whales, killer whales, barracudas, stingrays, and we can potentially optically map all of these different types of creatures. There are some creatures so deep, they reach into the twilight zone, and this isn't even that deep. We've got great white sharks in there, bottlenose dolphins. This website is literally super fascinating. I really recommend you come and check it out. And we're starting to get into dark parts of the ocean now. So I could be scrolling here for days, but basically what I'm trying to show you is we have all of these creatures Creatures. Oh, look at that spider crab that we can potentially optically map. And there are some creatures we have not even discovered yet. So the depths just keep going and I'm going to scroll past all of this and try and get to the bottom. 1,900 meters, 3,000 meters until we get to the deepest part of the ocean. It's called the Challenger Deep. That's the deepest part that we've currently like looked at. I think it was two or three guys in a submarine that managed to make it down here. But the pressure is 
is literally so high outside of this submarine that it could crush you like a pancake getting rolled over by a steamroller. There are very few creatures that can actually survive here in the deep dark depths to our knowledge. So how much do we actually know? Well, according to Professor Google, scientists figured there are still over 5 million species waiting to be found. Researchers around the world continue to study marine life and habitats to develop new strategies to preserve vital ocean ecosystems. Scientists estimate that 91% of ocean species have yet to be classified. That's more than 80% of our ocean unmapped, unobserved and unexplored. 91% of species in the ocean. That's a whole load of sequencing and optical mapping to do baby. But who's gonna pay for that? No, it will not be the sugar daddy's paying for it. So I think the funding will be a mixture of private and government. Institutions and bodies coming into play. According to the National Science Board, if we're looking at global research and development, between the years of 2000 and 2017, we've expanded from $722 billion to $2.2 trillion spend worldwide on research. Who's spending that money? Well, according to this website, the United States was the largest research and development performer in 2017, followed by China. So out of the whole globe, it was 25% USA and it was 23% China. But how much money is going to go into genomics? Well, worldwide, we don't know yet, but the governments around the world are willing to spend for research and discovery. I don't think China's released their figures. I don't think a lot of countries have got a definitive figure. However, in years to come, not only will we be able to map out everything that's in this deep, deep ocean, over the years to come, we will see some magnificent findings. Precious. So this is the animal world, right? Surely it's going to help Discovery Channel to create, you know, amazing documentaries. But in terms of science, not only will we be mapping out humans, but many plants, animals, bacteria and viruses. Academics are going to remain curious for many, many years. They will continue to research. And speaking of research, our CEO has been talking and he said this imagery illustrates one of the reasons OGM with Sapphire is so powerful. See the true genome structure now on manta rays. That's next level. People have also been looking at, you know, different types of animals, especially in the reptile family. So they've been optically mapping out some turtles. I wanted to open this document, but it keeps blocking us out. So as you can see here, LS Lee was optical mapping and they were looking at um, genome assembly, including 20 genes related to sex determination of network of turtles and vertebrates. Some of our competitors and other companies have been sequencing and optical mapping together. Cori Rhine bacterium Svedo tuberculosis genome. So this is a a bacteria known globally to infect ruminants, horses and rarely people. So universities have actually built out whole departments and amazing teams to actually explore everything to do with ecology, evolution and organismal biology. I almost said orgasmic biology. So when I was looking through the University of Iowa, the state university, I found this. They've literally been working on plants, you know, agriculture. We can see here they were actually looking at um, chromosome scale reference genome of black pepper, a soybean aphid, the genomes of a hymenopter which according to Professor Google is a large order of insects comprising of sawflies, wasps, bees and ants. They were also looking at the genome sequence of Gossi Piodis Kirki, a species of flowering plant in the family of Malvaceae. This is known from Mozambique, Kenya, Tanzania and South Africa. So this is all great Miguel, but what are they using? An optical map bionanogenomics was used to validate the assembly of individual contigs and high C connections between contigs. So we can see there's some pack bio in there and there's some bionanogenomics. So all of these studies are going to keep academics curious and researching for many years to come. Let's get that optical genome mapping shmoney baby. Also guys, before we close this video, I just wanted to hit you up with this news. So we just got into the AACR annual meeting 2021. So I'll be there for you guys. Thank you to every single person that's donated through the PayPal link below. Or if you're signed up to channel memberships or my Patreon, you really help me create good quality videos. So I thank you guys the most. We really want to get into this bad boy event too. As we can see, it's on the lineup for Bionanogenomics. So we got into AACR, we want to get into ACMG, baby. It costs $110 and whatever you guys can donate, whether it's $5, $10, anything, I really appreciate it because you help me create this great quality content. All I want to do is bring good content to you guys every single day. So even if you're able to join channel memberships, it's only 99 cents a month. But if you're unable to donate or join, just you hitting like and subscribe on my videos means the world to me. Thank you for always leaving me good comments as well. It keeps me positive, it keeps me motivated and I'm always on the lookout for that juicy information, baby. And make sure you have the notification bell on just so you don't miss any of these great videos. I hope you find these videos valuable and entertaining. They are for entertainment only. I'm not a financial advisor. I love and appreciate you. Leave me some comments, baby. Let's get sticky. Mr. Investalot over and out, baby.